we're getting there. Just a few random things here, a few random things in there. Uh, kitchen counter. All the stuff up above was removed yesterday by a friend, so that's good. Might as well take advantage of this while I still have it. I have no idea how it happened, but somehow my chair did not charge again last night. It was plugged in, but I didn't look down and look at the charger to make sure the light actually came on. I probably should start doing that. I have uh, the C500 here, but the batteries in this thing are starting to get really bad. And the back is really squeaky. So I'm gonna finish packing up some stuff here and hopefully that thing will get enough charge to get me through the rest of the day. Well, managed to get some more stuff packed up here. Probably looks like a lot on camera. Actually, not really. I mean, there's just a little bit of stuff in there and like a few random scattered boxes here. The chair has been plugged in now for a couple of hours. I think we've got enough charge to uh, go do some stuff. The plan right now is to go change the brakes on the front of the white van. So I'm gonna carefully drive it over to a friend's place, see if I can get the wheels pulled off and jam some new pads on there. Cause I need to use it tomorrow and the next day, cause... Connected to Bluetooth. Okay. <laughs> I need to use it for the next uh, couple of days to finish moving the rest of this stuff. Mostly I need it to move my sign making machine in there. That's, um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't want that thing damaged. And it won't fit easily in my green van. So, exciting stuff. We'll consider this a reaction video as to how terrible these brakes actually are under here. Actually not as scored up as I thought. There's not a lot of pad left, if any. The backside might be bad though. See, there's a jack stand. go. So that one's got a little bit of pad left on it. Definitely out of spec. But check this out. See those metal shavings? I think this is where the secret sauce is. Oh yeah. Don't worry, I just touched that. It's rainbow colored because it's hot. Don't think I burned myself. <laughs> There's your problem. <laughs> Some uh, quality $19 replacements here. All right, we've got the uh, pistons and the calipers here reset using the C-clamp. And I think we're ready to reinstall this side. Well, sometime soon this van, all the suspension stuff is gonna be getting replaced. So for now, we'll just call it good. And there we go, reinstalled. Nice and tight, that's the Ford way. But uh, that's how it's supposed to be, oddly enough. Once you stomp on the brake, it'll take up the slack, but it's just kind of funny. Yeah. So I've decided to put the wheels back on and I'm gonna check the bearings of the wheels on here because I can adjust the bearings while they're on here. And normally if there's any sort of slop, you'll be able to grab the wheel like this and move it and I'm not getting any in play. So I think the fact that they're turning so freely means that the bearings are in fact good. So we're gonna roll with that. Set this thing back on the ground and let's do the other side. Now the trick is making sure that your tire is just barely off the ground. That way you don't really have to lift anything. Just grab the top and pull it towards you. And there we go. Now it's all about physics. Just lightly roll it. It doesn't really weigh anything. Well, I mean, yeah, it weighs a lot, but not when it's standing up. We'll just lean it up against the bumper. And, uh, yeah. And in case anybody's wondering, yes, I did put a jack stand under there because 
something about safety. I mean, I'm not underneath it, but sometimes these jacks will fail and it'd be nice not to be smashed by things. It's kind of surprising how little actually holds the brakes on these half ton vans. We just have these two little dinky bolts and uh, they're only a half inch drive. Kind of makes you wonder, uh, well, I mean, you're not gonna break them. These are 10.9, but they seem small enough that when you're reinstalling them, it feels like maybe they're gonna break. And then you sort of question, what are we doing here, Ford? Like, is this acceptable? Or should we have beefed it up a little bit more? I think we know the answer to that. Beef is good. All right, let's have a look here. Yeah, that one's actually not, well, I was just gonna say it's not too bad but that's definitely out of spec. Now let's look at our inside one. Uh, that one, I would almost say, is still within spec. I mean, really on the low end, but yeah. Looks like our little bracket here got smashed. These things are supposed to hold the brake pads in place while the whole thing jiggles around, but I found most of the time all these do is make noise and carry on and are super annoying, but regardless, I'm gonna grab the pliers and uh, bend those back into shape. And by pliers, I actually meant a vise because there's one right here. All right, that looks good. Let's do the other one, wherever it went. All right, these should clip in here a little bit better now that they've been tweaked. Oh yeah, that's nice. Good solid fit. All right, there we go. No rattling there. Because this side was making a bunch of noise before. This is the one that was bent over here. Um, all right, let's get the uh, C-clamp and get this uh, caliper reset. Resetting these calipers is a pretty easy process. Um, basically this piston that sticks out here needs to go that way. You can see all the dust the dust and dirt seals are like broken and messed up on this. Once again, really should be replaced, but this is a temporary patch until everything here gets replaced with one ton hardware. So basically you just crank this in until this is flush with that. There we go. It's all flush now. Um, yeah, these dust seals are shot. Um, Hey, <laughs> shield your eyes if you're actually anyone who knows why this is bad. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, time for reinstallation. Nope. There we go. Brake pads are in here. They interface with these little stupid clips. And uh, now we can put the caliper on. Now allow me to illustrate why this slop is okay. You can see here how the whole thing moves around, but the brake caliper is not pressed against the brake pad. So I'm gonna hit the brakes here. If I can reach them, there we go. Hit the brakes a couple of times. Now that the piston has seated itself against the pads, we don't have any more movement. So super hokey the way brakes are designed, but apparently they somehow work most of the time. And uh, yeah, you can see now, drags on the pad just a little bit. But that's perfectly normal. Brake pads are always very slightly in contact with the discs. Um, once again, one of the mysteries of vehicles. I don't know why things don't catch fire and fall apart, but they usually don't. Unless I'm involved. And then they usually have some sort of amazing lock that <laughs> results in weirdness. But I think we're good. Uh, I'm going to jam this tire back on, fire it up, make sure we got plenty of brake fluid. I think we're good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this one for show and tell purposes. It's um, pretty amazing, I'm not gonna lie. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Everything's been put back together, the hood's closed, brake fluid's been topped off. I even washed it. Well, I paid some place $10 and they washed it, but you know. Yeah.
the brakes on the van are fixed. Uh, kind of nice being able to drive that now. Um, last little bits of stuff in here. I know I keep saying that over and over again. Got some help coming over in a couple of hours. I've got a few on-site storage units here and uh, they're gonna help me get those emptied out. I think we're pretty much done in here. I mean, there's a couple few things in that tree and a chair. But um, I just realized it's kind of a sad day. I'm officially sick of chicken nuggets. <laughs> I ate three of these and I don't think I can eat anymore. Which means I'm gonna have to find something else that I can get from a drive-thru without getting out of my vehicle um, that's cheap or something. Oh, I'm just, I'm rambling. Um, Okay, one step at a time. One step at a time. I'm gonna clean off the kitchen counter and we'll go from there. I may have installed my own custom uh, light switch here. This is one of the uh, one of the Wemo Wi-Fi switches. As you can see, it's blinking uh, because there's no more internet here. But I need to remove this and put back the regular switch, which is right here. And uh, these use this quick release mechanism that you push a screwdriver into and the zip tie kind of got stuck in there. <laughs> so I'm gonna kill the power and then we'll see about getting this switch back. In case you're wondering, there's batteries inside this. That's why it's still on. I should have used an electric screwdriver. This is a lot of work. These are quick connects, so basically all you have to do is stick the wire in through this little hole and it locks in place. And there we go. It is wired up. I actually just put the ground back on there. We're all connected back up and ready to go. officially wrecked for the afternoon, um, but we have a light switch. It's attached to these lights that take 10 minutes to warm up though. Actually like five to seven minutes, but we're good. There's one more customization left to remove and that's the, uh, the little USB charging outlet cover here. And this thing just comes right off. If you remember in a previous video, I talked about this and how it just uses these little tabs to uh, pick up the power there, which doesn't seem like the safest thing in the world, but you know. Finally, within the next hour, I will be done. Um, only thing left to do is peel some things off this wall. We're gonna have to come up with a uh, new version of this wall. Something slightly different, maybe more exciting. Um, haven't figured out what exactly yet, but uh, I'll definitely figure it out. Well, finally getting out of there. I, uh, I stashed one of my vans over here at a friend's place and I'm waiting on a lift to come pick me up. Take me back to the old place so we can get the other van out of there too. And then we're done. Made it back. Uh, nice and echoey in here. Yeah, so I've got just a couple of random things. There's my KFO leg braces, a uh, little swampy, and garbage can stays here. I think there might be some stuff in the fridge. Ah, uh, yes, my collection of hot mustard from McDonald's. Ooh, Jack Daniels horseradish mustard. That's like $9 for a bottle, I'm keeping that. All right, um, I need to grab some food right now. And then, after food, I think we're done. One last coffee in this rat shack before I leave. And, uh, I'm enjoying the air conditioning. It's 66 degrees in here. Look at this. 
can't believe it's finally happened. I'm out. Well, I will be in a minute or two. I've got three more hours on my lease, but I'm not gonna stick around that long. I'm gonna stick around exactly as long as it takes to eat this. Apparently this place has this valet garbage service. And apparently I've been paying for it and didn't realize it. They give us these garbage cans that say valet waste and supposedly just leave them outside the door. I've never done that, but I'm gonna do it now for the first time and last time ever. I just took about 75 photos of everything, just in case there's mysteriously damage that appears after I leave. Um, I think we're good to go. Closet's empty. Kitchen's good to go. Floor's fine. Deck's empty. Emptied the fridge. Let's get the heck out of here. Feel sorry for the poor suckers that still live here. At least uh, I won't have to deal with this traffic anymore. Yeah, the rush hour traffic here is pretty unreal. It backs up for miles. It's hot outside today. I guess there is one good thing about it. My tropical plants are uh, probably loving it. It's um, 83 degrees. Uh, I think I'm gonna unload some of this stuff and uh, then go install the air conditioner in the new place. Because it does not have central air.